We shall be reading from the book of Malachi, the book of Malachi, the prophet Malachi, chapter 2, and verse 17. 2, 17, the book of Malachi. With the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. You have wearied the Lord with your words, yet you say, in what way have we wearied him? In that you say, everyone who does evil is good in the sight of the Lord, and he delights in them. Or, where is the God of justice? Behold, I send my messenger, and he will prepare the way before me. And the Lord whom you seek will suddenly come to his temple, even the messenger of the covenant in whom you delight. Behold, he is coming, saying, The Lord of hosts. But who can endure the day of his coming? And who can stand when he appears? For he is like a refiner's fire and like launderer's soap. He will sit as a refiner and a purifier of silver. He will purify the sons of Levi and purge them as gold and silver, that they may offer to the Lord an offering in righteousness. Then the offering of Judah and Jerusalem will be pleasant to the Lord. As in the days of old, as in, as in former years, I will come near you for judgment. I will be a swift witness against sorcerers, against adulterers, against perjurers, against those who exploit wage earners and widows and orphans, and against those who turn away an alien, because they do not fear me, says the Lord of hosts. For I am the Lord, I do not change. Therefore you are not consumed, O sons of Jacob. The truth is that the Lord is God. In other words, He's got all the authority, and in heaven and on earth. And secondly, He doesn't change. Our God doesn't change. In other words, His love, His all wisdom, all power, but especially, He has a character and a way in which He works in the lives of men, which does not change. That's how He works. And it's very important, my beloved brethren, for us to know how God works because only in that way we can enter His work, how God thinks, because only in that way can we enter His thoughts. And what is the will of God? Because only knowing the will of God, we can enter the will of God. And is it necessary for this to happen? It is necessary and very useful. If we know what He wants, then, and since we want it also, it is easy for us to be pleasing for God. It is easy for us to win God's favor. We all know very, very well that there's no such thing as luck. That person isn't lucky and the other person unlucky. Luck does not predestine our lives. But what is and what does predestine our lives is God's favor or God's non-favor. So when we know how God thinks, works, what is His will, what He's about to do, how now He's about to do it, and we want and we care to win God's favor, then it's easy. It's easy because we enter His own path. And the fight of God is this, to teach man what is His will, to do His will. That's the trying of God. That's how God expresses Himself. And that's why God sent His Word. And God sent Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ sent the Holy Spirit to give man the ability to enter into the will of God. Let me say, biblically, into the holiest of holies, into heaven even, with the blood of Jesus. And there, not only to enjoy God's glory, but to co-work, for God to co-work with man, and for man to co-work with God. 
and we thank God because He has this logic and these intentions. In other words, He doesn't see man as an ant there in the corner who says, I'll send you a crumb to eat. God doesn't think like that. And He proved it also. God became man, became like man. He put on the form of a bondservant, who? The Almighty God, and became loved in the angels. Why? So he can draw near to man. To give man the ability to talk with God. For the Lord Christ to speak to man, for man to listen, for man to speak, and for Christ to listen. That's the position of God. And we thank God because on one hand, God is showing us the way and the Bible says, Christ says, I am the way. He shows us the truth and Christ persists, I am the truth. But He also shows us the life in which God wants us to live. And His Christ says, I am the life. So we have an example and here, my brother, we must give much importance to. We haven't got an example that's far off, but we have a face which is right next to us, who is risen, who is everywhere, the only face. Because He is God, but at the same time, He is man. Man, so we can draw close to Him, and so He can speak to us. And God Almighty in which nothing is impossible. And God goes even further and says, I'm not only the Almighty God, I'm not only the weak, a weak man, but I'm also the one who draws close to you so we can become friends. In other words, the characteristics of Jesus Christ are amazing. Our brother, the firstborn among the firstborns, our friend, someone who is compassionate, Lord, to whom has been given all authority in heaven and on earth, a good God, without evil, but especially my beloved brethren, He has a characteristic which is amazing, He loves you, He loves us, He died, for each one of us separately. He gave His soul for each one of us separately. And this God doesn't change. And in the thoughts of man, He answers. To the logic of man, He expresses Himself. And these people here, the people of Israel in those times, were in a difficult position because they saw iniquity reign. It's not the first time. This is in man's everyday life. For us to see iniquity, unrighteousness being exalted, reigning everywhere. Evil. Evil covering righteousness. And the people of Israel are complaining. And they say, Lord, whoever does bad, he's pleasing before you. And he who does evil finds delight before you, is in grace, is in joy. And they continue, Where is the God of justice anyway, in which we have known through your word? We know that you're just, righteous, and you always do justice and righteousness. Where are you now? I'm waiting, but I can't see you. And in this question, and in this position, we have been found many, many times. Lord, how long will I wait for? How long? How long will I wait for until you judge my matter? When will you come and help me anyway, Lord? How long is it going to take? I see the evil person being exalted, favoured prospering, and I work for you. I stand and I'm waiting for you, but I see no results in my life. And God says, don't weary me. Don't make me sad. I can see you. 
When you speak to me like this, I'm saddened. You make me weary. You place a burden on me. Don't put a burden on me. Don't doubt my justice. Don't doubt my wisdom. God is not unjust to forget the labor of your love. God is not unjust to intervene so you can justify the righteous person. Don't put a burden on me, God says, and God is complaining, but with a sweetness and a gentleness, because God is love. And he continues, come, let me explain to you my plan. Come, let me tell you how I work. A time will come and I will judge the sorcerers, the adulterers, the perjurers, those who exploit wage earners and widows and orphans, those who turn away an alien. A time will come and I will judge them. Don't tell me why I'm not doing it now. Don't tell me why I don't intervene now. Don't sadden me. Don't weary me. What I must do, I will do. But what I will do, you must understand it. It's much, much greater. It's more higher than your thoughts and logic and even your own complaints. Come, let me tell you how I work. It's very serious, my brethren. For us to know, as we said in the beginning, how God works. He is a God of judgment. He is. He's a God of righteousness. God is love, but is also consuming fire. And how many times have we seen this? God is love, but is also consuming fire. God's righteousness cannot be doubted. And God's judgment cannot be doubted. He is the judge of the living and the dead. But the characteristic which is in the true God, my well, beloved, is love. Before judgment, before trouble, before condemnation, which God doesn't want, God doesn't want a sinner to die. Before all these things, God will give chances. God will give chances so the unjust can repent. God doesn't want the death of them. We as people want many times for God to judge a person right now and break his head, but God hasn't got that kind of spirit. Before everything else, I will send my angel to prepare my way. I will send my messenger. I will send him to say repent because the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Repent and return to God so you can flee from all these things that are about to happen because they will happen. But repent. Who will say these things too? And now this is today's message my brethren. He will say repent to everybody. And to those who don't seek Him, and to those who do seek Him. Who, at this moment, can say, Lord, come and judge? Who is sure that, who is sure that He will be out of this judgment? To the point, my brother, that we all stumble in many things. God is good and long-suffering to all of us. And that's where I continue saying, I will send my messenger, to prepare my way, and the Lord whom you seek will come to perform judgment. But who is able to stand in that day, in the day of his coming? Who will be able to stand when Christ will come as a judge with boldness and say, It is him, not my fault. Who is this person? Because when he will come, he won't come and judge. Immediately we thank God for that. Firstly, He will put things in order. He will come to fix things first. In other words, He will come like a refiner's fire, like a launderer's soap, so He can refine, purify, 
the gold and silver in the furnace of fire and trial. In other words, I'm asking for you to perform judgment and you say that you are coming to give me more trials. I'm asking for you to free me and you're saying that I will come and make you pass through the fire of sorrow. Do you see now, my beloved brethren, the will of God and the will of man, how far they are from each other? As far as the heaven is far from the earth. That's how far my counsels are, God says, from your counsels. And as far as heaven is from earth, that's how far my paths are from your paths, God says. The way in which I follow from the road you follow is far like heaven and earth. That's why. Come. Come to me, Christ cries out. Learn from me that I am humble and lonely in the heart. And then I will give rest to your souls. Come close to me to know my will. And be careful how you pray, because your prayers has, has consequences. If you ask for judgment, I must come and purify you first. If you're asking for grace, I will come to you with grace. Come then, come and fix your heart so you can know how you should pray. Come so you can realize how you should stand before God. God isn't for you to give Him commandments. God is there so He can advise you and for you to submit to His opinion, submit to His word and the voice of the Holy Spirit. Ask from God firstly so He can open your ears Trained ears, so you can know His voice, so you can know His will, so you will walk on that path, so you can flee from great troubles, which will come if you don't enter His will and under His will. If you persist to ask for judgment, then the intervention of God in your life will be painful. But if you, in your heart, ask for mercy, the division of God will be with grace in your life. So let's think. Let's think this over. God says, I will, I must cleanse as a refiner cleanses gold and silver and it is clean in the same way I must do to my own silver and my own gold which are my children but there are two ways one way is the way of gentleness of holiness through love and through God and the other way of cleansing is through the strictness and forgive me for saying this but you understand why and the harshness of God the father loves his child, and the mother loves her child. And when the child is good, it doesn't touch him. But when the child starts to resist, starts to be in danger, then the father becomes strict. And when the child resists even more, the father could become harsh. And if we accept training from our parents according to the flesh, who care about us, in a human way, and many times falsely, shouldn't we much, much more accept God's training? And we must point out, there is the training of gentleness and the training of strictness. So God is inviting us to be good and blessed children. Quiet. And let me say in a biblical way, for us to ask from God to give us a heart according to His own heart. For us to know His will. To ask from God to give us a heart which is perfect before Him. And what is a perfect heart? The heart that hopes in God and only in God. And then, when cleansing will come in one way or the other, then 
who offer the Lord an offering in righteousness, then his prayer, your prayer, the prayer of this person will be according to God's will. And then man will have boldness as the Bible says, when you ask according to the will of God, you should know that God listens to you. And if you know that God listens to you, then whatever you ask, you shall receive. But it's not for us only to ask, but firstly for us to know how and what we should ask for according to the will of God. Then the off our offering will be in righteousness. Then our prayers will be in righteousness. And then the offering of the people of God will be pleasing before God as in the beginning. And then with ease, God, not with fear, the fear of de death, but with ease, God will draw close to you in judgment. Because you will be innocent. You will be just. Justified with the blood of Jesus. Justified with the grace of God. Justified with the power of the Holy Spirit. God will be able to come as a judge. And for there not to be any casualties among the people who love God. And then God will act perform His judgment in righteousness. So, God will perform righteousness. But firstly, the righteousness of God must come into our lives. So, the petition, the petition of God for us is, seek firstly the kingdom of heaven and His righteousness and everything else I will add to you. Do you want all your prayers, all your petitions to be heard pleasing from God? And for them to be answered in a way that's excellent by God? Because there are people who pray and their prayers bounce off the walls without any result. Do you want your prayer to have results? Do you want your prayers to truly have meaning? In other words, for your prayers to be a cooperation with God and you. How serious is this? Let me say it in another way. Whose prayers are heard by God with great interest? Let's see it in a different way now. Which person's prayers are full of power and authority before God? How can I draw near to God with boldness and courage and for me to be certain that God listens to me? And since I am sure that He listens to me, for me to receive whatever I ask for. Is this for all people? No, it's not. No, it's not. That's why. How long should I pray for? I'm not getting any answers. Don't worry God. Don't sadden Him. Ask Him to reveal you His will in your life and for you to walk in it so He can sanctify you, purify you, free you. And then, whatever you ask for, the Lord will give it to you. And even more, not in partiality, because God it doesn't show partiality, but in righteousness, because God is just. Amen.